Well, I'm really excited about our next thing, but uh, oh, it's big. This is a BenQ gaming monitor, Mobius. The EX3415R. <laughs> sign, sign, cosine, sign, 3415R9. There's a dead pigeon in here. No, there's, there's not. All right, so one of the reasons this panel is so exciting is because it's IPS, in-plane switching. That's typically one of the higher quality, you know, image options that you have for a panel. And yet, this is a gaming monitor. Gaming usually means high refresh. DisplayPort 1.4. I really do like, and this cannot be understated, that that monitor is so well packed you can just slap a you can just slap a shipping label on it and mail it, which is exactly what happened. So what do you get in the box? You get an HDMI cable and a DisplayPort cable. We'll test both of those. We have a power brick, user guide, installation manual, and technical specifications. A reasonable looking USB 3 A to B cable. Cord cover. A nice metal monitor stand. There's always money in the monitor stand. Or was that the banana stand? That is pretty much all there is to it. Important things to note about this monitor stand. Tilt, swivel, and height adjustment. Quality product. Good job, BenQ. Now if you're like me and you're not into monitor stands, and instead you're into monitor arms, I'm happy to report this has a completely standard 100 millimeter visa mount. So you can use it with all those really expensive Spaceco arms, or even the cheap ones off of Amazon. Now in case you weren't aware, this is a curved display. This should give you an idea of the level of curve that you're dealing with. It's not extreme, it's pretty good. The resolution on this device is 3440 by 1440. So it's 1440p, 21 by nine widescreen. In terms of fit and finish, this monitor is all plastic. It does have metal bits where it counts, like the, uh, the feet for the monitor arm. You know, they extend here, it's nice. It's not really top heavy. Center of gravity is good. The stand itself is metal, but surrounded by plastic cladding. It has a nice metallic finish. You know, feels like uh, sandblasted aluminum, but is actually plastic. At the bottom edge here, the, the plastic for the speaker grill almost has a cloth-like feel to it, but it's actually plastic. So I'm not really quite sure how they did that. It's definitely plastic. It just looks like a cloth speaker cover. It does look pretty high end. Otherwise, the design seems pretty minimalistic. You know, they've done a reasonable job trying to keep the bezels as small as possible. And there's uh, ample room for breathing with the ventilation at the top. The cable cover, of course, has a similar, you know, metallic finish. So that if you're gonna use that in the back to hide your, hide your cables, hide your sins, You've got that, you got that as an option. In terms of IO at the back, we've got two HDMI inputs, our DC power jack, headphone connections, so you could take your analog audio out of the monitor from the digital audio coming over HDMI or display port. We got our USB 3B uh, input and then two USB 3 ports on the bottom here. For controls, we have a dedicated power button, which lights up and you can see it, a five-way hat switch, and a dedicated select button. There's also a speaker at the top of the monitor in the back, which is no doubt meant to bounce sound off of a wall or something behind the monitor. Superior sound by Trevolo. Nobody ever uses the built-in monitor speakers. Sorry, BenQ. I mean, they might if you're in like, they might if you're in like IT or something, but gaming, not so much. So the latency numbers that we're looking at here really are best in class for an IPS display. 2.3 milliseconds till initial display on an IPS display is basically unheard of. That is an incredible response time for IPS. As this test image is running at 60 hertz, that means that it takes 16 milliseconds from the top of the display to the bottom of the display to go through the full image. And that means by the time you get to the bottom of the display, it's an even better, you know, one-ish milliseconds because it actually renders that 1 60th of a frame uh, just a little bit faster than uh, 1 60th of a second. Now, a lot of the time with monitors like this, there'll be an overshoot or an undershoot or something you can kind of control through the menu. I looked, I didn't really see anything that had any kind of effect like that. So when I'm doing chase squares, or the UFO testing or something like that, I can get a little different readings from measuring latency and doing the chase squares test and doing the high speed footage. This thing was pretty locked in. 
The measured grey to grey time is around 5.5 milliseconds, which is really darn good, and real world chase squares on this test, worst case scenario is around 8 milliseconds, which is an incredible result for an IPS display. But for an IPS panel, it was incredibly impressive. This IPS panel is faster than some VA panels, which are competing panels. And remember, VA is historically a faster technology than IPS. So BingQ has really done something with the panel here. The panel that they've picked is particularly good, especially combined with the electronics. Now, the overall input latency of being on the order of about 2 milliseconds, give or take, isn't bad. That's really, really quite good especially considering the IPS aspect of it. Now, I had a little more trouble reproducing, you know, the, the color space on this monitor that advertises 98% uh, DCI-P3 and over 100% of Adobe uh, sRGB. So there is an, an sRGB menu option, but when I set that, it reduced both the sRGB color space and the DCI-P3 space, and the DCI-P3 space was barely over 60% in that scenario. I don't know what that really means, but I was able to eventually get pretty close to the 98% DCI th uh, P3 spec by setting the custom color menu and setting it to reddish under the color profile. Now the color profiles for both configurations are available on the level one text forum. You can download those. There's also a screenshot of the menu. So if you want to step through the menu and configure yours the same way, you absolutely can do it. In terms of like subjectively, the picture quality, it's really darn good. For HD, this is the first monitor that I'm going to give it a passing grade, maybe even an A, in terms of high definition quality. So on, in Windows, you want to be able to just toggle HD on and basically have it work. That was pretty much my experience here. You actually get three different HD modes in addition to some of the fake HD modes. And that would be probably an hour long conversation if we got into well, this is HD and this is not exactly HD and nobody can agree on this HD standard, so they have this other HD standard. The two that you probably care about are Game HD and Cinema HD. I played Resident Evil 8 on the Game HD, which of course setting HD in the menus. I had a really, really enjoyable time with that. It was a lot of fun. It's hard to capture in a way that you can really see it on YouTube, but high definition, like, this is the first monitor where I've really enjoyed the HD experience with it. And there's a dedicated HD button over on the right side. So you can hit that and toggle HD on for the different modes if HD is on in Windows. If HD is not on in Windows, it'll still have a simulated HD mode, which seems to make a difference in the color space. So I, I'll admit I don't fully understand how it's supposed to work. It seems like the display and the computer, I mean, there's DDC. <laughs> there can be a meaningful data exchange between the computer and the display. It seems like the, the display industry and the video card industry should have gotten together to figure this out. It doesn't seem like it should be this complicated. The experience from BenQ here, though, is the first one where like HD has basically worked to my ex expectations out of the box. So I gotta give them points for that too. So good job, BenQ. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a level one monitor review to Mobius display from BenQ. I'm signing out and I'll see you later. See you in the level one forums even.